We're back with the answer to today's biz quiz. When Georgia Power was first established in 1883, what was its original name? The answer is C, Georgia Electric Light Company of Atlanta. In fact, Atlanta was one of the first cities in Georgia to demand electric lighting. And that brings us to today's executive profile. From power to public service, Southern Company is committed to meeting people where they are. It's the parent company of Georgia Power and AGL Resources, Atlanta Gaslight. With more than 9 million customers, it's one of the largest utility companies in the country. But its influence extends beyond energy to fuel a bigger purpose, giving back to the community. Leading that charge is the president of external affairs, Chris Womack. From his humble beginnings in Greenville, Alabama, Chris developed an interest in politics and helping people. His career took him all the way to Capitol Hill, where he worked for then U.S. Representative Leon Panetta. But his desire to give back eventually led him back home as a governmental affairs representative for Alabama Power. Womack has held several leadership positions at Southern Company. Now he shares his personal quest to continue to improve the Atlanta community as you'll see in today's Executive Profiles. Nineteen fifty-eight, you were born in Greenville. Tell me about life for you growing up in Greenville, Alabama. I grew up during a period of uh, incredible segregation uh, in terms of divisions of the community. Uh, but, but shortly after that, uh, I began to see things as, as they begin to change and we moved toward integration of our, of our public schools and then saw greater division because as we kind of integrated the public schools, the, this whole new advent of uh, private schools kind of started up and you saw a lot of whites who didn't want to go to school uh, with African Americans uh, begin to develop uh, their own private schools. What were some of the key learning moments for you as a child that maybe helped contribute to who you are now as an adult? There were many interesting moments in terms of when you face discrimination, you try to be patient, try to uh, try to be tolerant, but sometimes uh, you instinctively you had to confront it and a number of times where my mother was sick one time and we went to the doctor's office and there was a, a white waiting room and a black area where, where the blacks were, where were being treated and she was very ill and not being seen. And so I took her to, to the white side to be seen. And of course, many of the, the white patients on the other side were very kind of uncomfortable and was challenging us to remove ourselves. But I kind of screamed out for the doctor to come and say, you know, come and care for my mother. And so that was one of the, one of the instances. And How old were you at that time? Oh, I was probably eight or nine years old then. So you stayed focused on schooling for sure. School and education was essential. My mom was a teacher, so education was was critical and had to do well, had to had to behave, and had had to do right. Why well, head up to Michigan then for college? Um, you, you could, I mean, certainly there would have been opportunities for you yeah. in the South. What, what was attractive? Yeah, to you I mean, about I up I had gotten accepted to go to the University of Alabama uh, back in uh, 1975. Uh, but my dad lived, lived in Michigan, and we, we had spent a lot of number of summers in Michigan, and, and so I wanted a different environment, wanted a different experience, so I went off to Michigan uh, for, for, under, un, for undergraduate work. And uh, what was your degree in at Michigan? I got a political science degree. I mean, yeah. I've always been interested in politics. I mean, I, I would go to city council meetings when I was a little kid, and so I was always fascinated by politics and always fascinated by public policy and always fascinated by government. What, what drew you to that, do you think? I don't know. I mean, I, I always, I mean, there's always this instinctive of mine to, to kind of try to help people. Sure. Uh, try to try to give a little back. And I always kind of felt that government was kind of an essential service to, to make people's lives better. And that took you in your first step when you got out of school. I had gone to Washington, D.C. The, my pr the, the year before I graduated to work for Ralph Nader. Mm -hmm. And had some fun times with Ralph and doing a lot of public citizen work and uh, investigated a lot of uh, highway tra transportation safety issues with the Pinto and, sure. and a lot of different things that Ralph was doing. And so did that and just got the bug and knew that D.C. Was, was the place for me. And so after college, I went back and began to work for Leon Panetta. And what did you learn from uh, Secretary Panetta uh, in, in, during your time working for him that you think has contributed to your current career? Uh, just uh, don't be afraid to work. A lot of hard work and give it all you got. And really, when you have a responsibility, when you have a role, you work hard and you, you're there uh, to represent people. And and then and you represent everybody. But you left, you met, left public service yeah. and went to the private sector. Yeah. Uh, what was the 
uh, inflection point for you to get out of uh, the D.C. thing well, I want, and get yeah, back into I, I wanted to get to D.C. and then I wanted to get back south. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I wanted to get back home. I wanted to raise my kids back back in the south and n near their grandparents. Right. And so I had the opportunity uh, to, to join the Alabama Power Company in Birmingham at the time. It was just a, a fascinating opportunity to provide this incredible service, but also continue to, to focus on uh, making the community better, making the state better. So it was kind of a good cross-section of, of the business community, but also a lot of public policy issues that we had the opportunity uh, to, to, to debate, discuss, and get involved in. And within the world of Southern Company, you've been in the world of external affairs where you are now. You've yeah. been in the world of human resources, yeah. uh, economic development. What, what is, I mean, you've done uh, a little bit of generation. I gener ran power plants for for a number of years, right. so I've I've seen a lot of different roles in this company. And that's one thing we do as a part of our succession planning and leadership development program. We give people the opportunities to to see all parts of the business and I, it clearly, I think, makes us a better company and makes us better leaders of the company because we have a good good perspective of how the company really runs. It's no coincidence when you talk about your economic development efforts and all the things you're trying to do to give back to the community that you've become such a cornerstone of the Tour Championship and all the things that have gone out on with the Eastlake Foundation. Talk about that and how, what goes on at the, at the board level and at the C-suite level about, okay, it's worth us investing money in sporting venues and to promote our brand, uh, yeah, for me, for me, for Atlanta, and I, and I chaired the Atlanta Sports Council for uh, f for a period. I also chaired the Atlanta Convention and Visitors Bureau, right. and so those activities are critical for this being the wonderful city that it is. I mean, Atlanta is a it's a wonderful sports town, it has wonderful facilities. Southern Company is very proud to be a partner with the Tour Championship, and which is hosted out of, out of the East Lake Golf Course, and so. As we have been working with Tom Cousins and others to redevelop that community, to have that golf event there uh, for for a number of years, has really been kind of a cornerstone of really revitalizing that 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 entire neighborhood, and working with a number of other neighborhoods, whether it's Grove Park, whether it's the west side of Atlanta, whether it's uh, Woodlawn in Birmingham, and and other cities like New Orleans, taking note the model of what has happened in East Lake and saying, how do we replicate this in other places? Georgia Power has also planned to diversify its energy resources. Its community solar program allows customers to support renewable energy while saving money on their utility bill. As a point of disclosure, Georgia Power is a sponsor of Atlanta Business Chronicles Biz.